You know what time it is, right? Yeah. It is new product time. New products. Yeah. Okay, Lady Ada, first up. Let's do this. What's this up? is the Iris. Okay. The latest from 3D Robotics, the consumer edition of their quadcopter. Now, um, they also, uh, I'm going to go over here, they also changed their packaging. Yeah. The packaging is a lot smaller, which is great. Oh, wow. That's this like half the size. way easier to ship now. Okay. So, this is what you get, and this is 10% off. It's, again, this is like one of those ones, not a great deal if you go for it, but if you do, um, it's good for you. So this is ready to fly quadcopter, like ready to fly is in out of the box. 32-bit Cortex M4 autopilot system, U-Blocks GPS and magno magnetometer? Magne magnetometer. Magnetometer, yeah, sorry. Um, radio, compass, compass sensor. Compass sensor. Radio telemetry ground station communication. Um, brushless motors, these are uh, 850 uh, kV. Kilovolt. Yeah. Uh, powered by rechargeable lithium polymer battery, GoPro camera mount, 10 to 15 minutes of flight time, uh, 0.8 pounds payload capacity, this thing can lift, uh, multicolor LED status indicators, complete APM, copter autonomous capabilities, free ground station software for PC, Mac, and Linux. This is the best. This is the best one. DIY drone yeah. that you can build. That's so nice. We've got it. And we also had Chris Anderson on Hardware Hangout with us. Yeah. And he talks about why they took funding. Uh, what their manufacturing process involves. Um, All this, sorts of stuff. Yeah, the 3D iris. Um, we looked around. This is the best one. So go for it, Check it out. if you like it. Okay. What is this lady? Pit Fit. <laughs> no, Pi <laughs> TFT uh, Pi Moroni case. This is a case from Pi Moroni. They have the Pi Bow, which is extremely popular. It's the rainbow case. It's one of the first cases for the Raspberry Pi. And people really like our Pi TFT, which is sold out right now. We're, we're getting more parts as soon as possible uh, yeah. to make more. Trust me, we know that you want some more. But uh, if you have one, you may like this lovely case, which fits perfectly on top of an Arduino, and you, it fits into this little slot. With uh, There's an extra two layers so that the um, Pi TFT sits on top, and you can use the touch screen, and you can break off a little plastic piece to get to the buttons. It is just like totally lovely and perfect, and it is a perfect case if you have a Pi TFT and you want to use it. Okay. That's so perfect. Yeah. Next up. Calipers. 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 And you know what? Um, these are great. And we have really high-end ones, and then we have these nice mid-range ones. Yes. Um, Lady, maybe you can talk about why and what you would use calipers for. Because I sometimes we have experts, but we yeah. have more beginners than experts. That's right. And we actually so, have a calipers tutorial. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, the calipers, and they look about like this. They're about this size. And calipers are precision measuring tools, and uh, electrical engineers need them all the time because they always have to measure things. And th we have a pair of calipers in the story, the, the Mitsutoyus, and uh, they're, ca they're capacitive um, calipers too. These are capacitive calipers that are, they're not as good as the Mitsutoyus, but they're really, really close. Um, these are Chinese made ones, um, not Japanese made, but they're like, they're like 90% as good, but half the price. So if you're like hardcore and you want the best calipers, get the Mitsutoyus. If you're okay with having something that's maybe not, you know, going to last you 50 years, maybe only 30 years, get these, um, they're battery powered, they're capacitive sensing, like, uh, Mitsutoyu ones, uh, they do millimeter inch and they have all the same you know, capabilities, um, they last a very long time on the batteries. Batteries do not die instantly. They last months, 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 months on the batteries. I, in fact, I have a pair and it's still not dead. So I don't know how long it lasts, but I know it's at least like three to six months, probably more. Um, I'll just show it on the overhead real fast, just what you can do okay, with them. Okay, great. So you've got overhead. Okay, so you've got, okay, so you've got calipers. And there's a dial, and it's a digital dial. There's analog dial ones, but I have these digital ones. You can change from millimeters. Oops. Oops, sorry about that. on. Well, uh, millimeters to inches. You can measure things. It's very precise. You can measure exactly how big my finger is. It's 0.319 inches. You can convert that to millimeters. 8.3 millimeters. So it's it's really easy to use. There's a battery case here if you want to. Uh, change the battery. It's, it's got a screw in it to keep it closed. There's a little um, thumb screw here. You can measure inner diameter, outer diameter. The tips are nice and pointy. Um, it's a nice scale. Uh, there's also the, the depth gauge back here. Um, check the caliper tutorial we have and learn for how to use calipers if you're like super 
You can zero it because it just came out of the box. Um, there's an on-off switch, but you know I don't even really turn mine off. I just keep it on all the time. It's okay. Nice, good calipers. Okay. That's it. All right. Next up, we've got a flashlight. Yes. But not just any old flashlight, Lady Ada. Yeah, this is a open source flashlight, which I just kicked off the table, so hopefully it's still alive. I'm sure it's alive because it's built out of a huge piece of solid yeah. aluminum. This is a, a crazy flashlight. I'll, I'll open it here. Um, it's it was a, I believe it was a Kickstarter that was successful, and it's basically uh, you know this big, and uh, it's really bright. Is this an open source? It is. A, it's, an open source flashlight? I didn't even know you could be open source and be a flashlight. Oh, no, those photons are open source. <laughs> uh, open. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an open source flashlight. I mean, it's a really well-made, you know, waterproof or weatherproof flashlight. And I can, also show, <laughs> I can also show in the overhead. Is, uh, okay. I don't think it's, I think it's, if it's bright enough to show. Can you adjust the levels on it? Yeah, we'll try. Sure. Yeah. What would you like me to do? Make it a little brighter. Make it a little bit brighter. Um, I mean, like, I'll try. Yeah. Well, that's more saturation. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I think it's a little bit better. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I can see it. So you can open up the back, and um, there's a battery, uh, and it's a rechargeable lithium ion battery with a protection cell. And then here, next to the red mark, you can see there's a micro USB connector, and that's for charging the battery. And also, there's like an Arduino inside, and the Arduino is what controls like the pulse width and and the PWM and what it does with the button. So it actually is a little microcontroller that you can program using like the Arduino IDE, which is kind of nuts. Um, I mean, it's just like this really beautiful metal open source 3D printer, open source flashlight, live the dream. And then it's cool because like there's can, three levels built in. I mean, this is just ridiculous. You can, you can do more stuff with it. You can hook it up and have it go on and off based on a temperature sensor. sensor or something. Yeah, you can, you can do all sorts of stuff. You could change it. You can have it like slow fade up. You could have it like blink out like Morse mm. code for SOS or whatever. Which really? Is, well, my uh, bike light for some reason does that. I don't think it's terribly useful, but yeah. So yeah, take it apart. Uh, this is cool. It's very well made. Oh, and another thing that's really cool. If you look at the LED, um, this is the LED. It's made on a, a, a metal. Um, aluminum PCB for heat sinking. So the body of the, the flashlight acts as a heat sink. Yeah. All right, it's really a really lovely flashlight. It's, it's expensive, but it's like, this is a nice flashlight. Yeah, but you know, freedom isn't free. So, got the open source stuff. All right, next up, Lady Ada, we've got these screens. Yeah. Screens of screens. This is um, a seven inch uh, high resolution IPS display. Uh, we have these in cases, like a stand-up case, um, but this version is kind of like just the parts. So this is if you want to embed it in something um, that you want, like a really nice screen for your BeagleBone or for your Raspberry Pi or for any computer that has HDMI, VGA, or composite out. Uh, this is a really great display. Um, you can see over there is the controller board, uh, which is the blue thing. It has HDMI, VGA, and composite connections. also takes like 5 to 12 volt power. Then there's a little control uh, keyboard that you can use to like set brightness and contrast and like blah 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 and like on off etc. And then um, over there is the screen itself. So seven inch diagonal. This is used in uh, this screen is the same screen that's used in the original Nexus Seven, not the Nexus Seven that just came out like a couple months ago, but the one from like a year ago. It's 1280 by 800 pixels. Uh, it's IPS, so it looks good from like every angle. It's super skinny, and it looks really good. And I'll, I'll just hold it up because I have it hooked up here to. Uh, can you go to the full screen? Sure. Thanks. I'll hold it up because it's it's fairly large. Um, so yeah, this is the screen, and then this is the controller board, and yeah, the screen looks pretty good even from like odd angles, which I kind of like. So like normally if it was a, a, an LCD or a TFT, it wouldn't look so good. Well, let me pull the uh, plastic protective off so it looks even better. So yeah, you can you can see it's oh, like great. pretty sweet from all angles. Yeah. It's, it's super high HD. resolution. Yeah, it's HD. It's true HD because it's uh, 10. Your it's HD is showing 1280 HD. 1280 by 800. Um, I don't think it'll show up really well on the overhead 
Can we light. try? We can light. Yeah, I don't know why the contrast is iffy. Oh, it's not so bad. Uh, yeah, there you go. So yeah, it's Let's it's it. super sweet, and then you can you know change like the pixels and you know whatever. Let's put it on bright mode, soft mode. I don't know. Um, you can change uh, whether it's on or off. On, off. And yeah, this is nice screen. Has a little adapter board on the back. And yeah, it works. We have it working with a Raspberry Pi, but if you want, you can use it with like any kind of um, computer or display that has HDMI. Great. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Now, my favorite part of the show. Well, right before my favorite part. All right, we got an owl. I mean, the owl, the owl is really nice. Um, we have yeah, our, our, yeah. yeah, we have okay. our, our product, but uh, yeah, this is an owl. We have a felt owl kit. Yeah. We showed this on Wearable Wednesday with Vicky Stern, and the reason why we showed it off was because this counted as a component for a project. Yeah. But this is a felt kit, and we're releasing a, a project soon that turns this into a fun felt kit plus electronics. Right. So here, I'll, I'll do this if you want. Wait, what? So this, is, this is a little trinkety thing, and Mike Barella worked on this, and so if you wanted to, you could, um, it'll. You shake it, and it still sound? Yeah. That's cute. Can I show it off of, um, on the overhead? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, this is a little annoying. I'm gonna unplug it because it's, it's a little squeaky. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a little little felt owl kit, and it's actually pretty colorful. I don't know. What yeah, there you go. A little bit more colorful. So it's got um, multiple pieces of felt. Um, you you get actually just well, that's better. You get um, st uh, sheets of felt that you cut out and you sew them, and uh, this combines would combine really well with electronics. So you can see, ooh, the electronics are inside there. Um, it's a fun part. We actually just think that these are just adorable. And a lot of people want to combine stuff like trinkets and gemmas with plushies. Yeah. And this is a really great little plushie kit for a good price that you can, because you're making it, you can stuff the electronics inside of it. OK. And then All right. we, can, we can turn this on and toss this around. This would be really good for, for MOSFET. He'd really like this. Oh. Yeah. Is it a tilt sensor or what is it? You'll have to figure it out. <laughs> okay. okay, let's keep going. Now, my favorite part. Okay. This is a new product from you, Lady Ada. Yay! Okay, so let's look at the big photo. Uh, can you go to the next photo? Yeah. Okay, so this is um, a new breakout for the Max 31850. And the Max 31850 is a thermocouple amplifier. So a thermocouple is a type of temperature sensor that's made out of two wires. And people really like them because they can go um, to very hot temperatures and very low temperatures. So most semiconductor-based temperature sensors can't go above like 125 degrees um, centigrade. Whereas thermocouples can go, um, a K-type thermocouple can go up to like 1200 degrees Celsius. So it's like really, really, really hot. Um, so if you're like doing kilns, or if you're doing um, smokers, or you're doing like, I don't know, smelting. And that's like really hot, um, they can even reflow oven, whatever. Uh, you'll want to use a thermocouple. Thermocouple is, 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 can handle that kind of heat. But thermocouples have extremely low voltage output, like microvolt. You need to have an amplifier board handle them. You can't just plug it into an Arduino. And this board, uh, is what you connect your thermocouple to, and it will do all of the like maneuvering and management of that micro voltage to get you out an actual temperature. And we have a, a thermocouple amplifier in the store already. It's SPI based, so it needs uh, two or three pins. This is a one wire based thermocouple. One wire based means you, the microcontroller has to be able to handle one wire, which is a, a kind of a weird bus designed by Maxim Dallas. Um, the, it's a similar in one way to I-squared scene, which you can have any number of devices on one pin, one data pin, shared with like hundreds of devices if you want. Um, but the trade-off is that you have to kind of like write this management code for one wire. Arduino has a one wire library for it. Uh, I think Raspberry Pi also has one wire support in the kernel, but not every microcontroller has it. Like for example, I don't think the basic stamp does. I'm not sure that the Netduino does either. It has to be a real time operating system that can handle the one wire bit twiddling. Um, so if you're not sure if your microcontroller has one wire, check to the, stick with the SPI version of the thermocouple amp. However, if you uh, want to use one wire because you want to connect multiple sensors on one wire, it's just, it's 
wiring-wise a lot easier. Um, it can also use parasitic power, so you only need a data line and ground line to every sensor. Uh, this is a really cool chip, came out from Maxim very recently, and we got our hands on them and we're like, this is great. So we made a breakout for it, which you can see here. And I have a demo that I can show. Okay. Yeah, I had a couple of photos. This is, I guess, from Oh, yeah, sorry, this right? is, yeah. So this yeah. is showing it uh, two thermocouples sharing one data line. Yeah, I'll get to an Arduino. Okay, yeah. so we have um, the Arduino. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, so we have an Arduino hooked up. And one of the trade offs with one wire is that it's annoying to level shift like I squared C. Um, I, yeah, hold on. Okay. Uh, uh, like I squared C, you have to have a level shifter for it. And um, because of the way one wire works, you can't put the level shifter on the breakout itself. So we have a separate level shifter down here. And there's two thermocouples, and they're sharing this one data line, which is kind of nice. And then I just have it printing out the temperature on this, whoa, character display that j just killed. One second. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. What did you do? I broke it. Live demo. Yeah. Hold on. Let me try again. Do over. Do over. Okay. Where were we? Not dropping our electronics. Okay. So we've got this, uh, a character display connected up to the Arduino. And then we've got um, two thermocouples. If I hold this thermocouple, which is the zero thermocouple, you can see that the temperature is going up slowly. 30 degrees, I'm getting warmer, warmer. Also let go. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's very easy to, like, one of the things that I know is that people who are using the SPI thermocouples, they're like, well, if I want to connect up like five thermocouples, which isn't unusual, especially if you're, you have like an engine block and you're time, trying to take temperatures all over the engine block, um, thermocouples are the only thing that, that can handle that kind of heat, but it's in a lot of wiring and it's like you have to kind of share pins, it's annoying, so if you want to be able to data logger. One of the nice things about one wire is again, shares one data pin. And each sensor has a unique identifier with it uh, that's burned in at the factory, a 64-bit identifier. So, you know, if you have calibration data per sensor, uh, you can store it with that unique identifier, which might be useful because thermocouples have a variation of a couple degrees um, per. So that's my demo. Okay. Good work, Lady Ada. All right. And with that, guess what, that, guess what that means? Yeah. You just finished up new products. Good work.